In the past couple of days, we actually got quite a bit of news around Fallout 76. In this video, what I'm going to be going over is the most recent Inside the Vault article by Bethesda, this containing details about the future of the Battle Royale mode and just kind of some details on the game in general. Some things were leaked with the most recent Fallout 76 update, allowing us to gain some insight as to what kind of events are likely on the way in the game. But then even further, we're going to talk a bit about some of the rewards or interesting aspects of the Battle Royale mode that you may have just not really Realized. If you guys do enjoy the content or like Fault 76 videos, you can subscribe. There should be several cool things on the way. But with all that being said, starting things off, let's first look at Bethesda's most recent Inside the Vault article and why it's kind of disappointing, or at least several people are finding it pretty disappointing. So the title of the article is What's Next for Nuclear Winter? A big question that up until now we didn't have concrete answers on. And you could kind of argue even still we don't have super concrete answers on. They talk a bit about why they actually added a battle royale into Fallout 76. I've actually made a full video going way more in depth on that if you want to check that out and some of their justification or reasoning as to how they came to that conclusion. But even beyond that, they also share several other things that are coming with future updates. Firstly, they do name balance adjustments as one of the major ones. They talk specifically about balance changes for weapons and perk cards, naming one such one of Frog Legs. Frog Legs has started to get this reputation of being an extremely overpowered perk card. It allows you to jump really high and coupling this with a grenade launcher, you could be pretty devastating in game. So some nerfs to that in the future are welcome, but that's the only thing they mention explicitly. Otherwise, what kind of weapon or other perk card changes we'll see are kind of a mystery. Another thing they touch on are duplicate perk rewards. Leveling up and opening perk card packs in the game, you actually will find pretty quickly, you'll get a lot of duplicates that are pretty much pointless. In this mode, it's not like you could stack perk cards or use one to rank up another, so you're just stuck with several things when you could only use one of them. This can become a lot more frustrating when, even at very high levels, after unlocking a lot of perk cards, you still don't have access to all of them. You have a ton of duplicates, but they'll still be those few holdouts that you're striving to get. Here, all they really say is they're going to be looking at this and trying to figure out ways to make improvements to it going forward. And then finally, they mention how they want to improve the stability of the mode. As a final note, they do mention how they're planning to do updates for the new nuclear winter mode alongside the main modes, naming specific things like new features, enhancements, and balance changes, and really putting emphasis on wanting community feedback so they could actually figure out what exactly the community wants changed or improved. They also do talk a bit about patch 11. They mention how this is going to be coming on the earlier part of July, and it's going to be a larger patch affecting all of the game modes, not just battle royale. And some of the things they mentioned included with this patch are pretty interesting, saying power armor improvements, new features, and plenty of bug fixes. The new features in particular have me interested. They mentioned early July, and although obviously that's not a very exact date, there's been a lot of speculation that Fallout 76 will feature a July 4th or Independence Day event. It makes sense, the lore of the game is very heavily rooted in US culture. July 4th would naturally fit in really well with that. It also is probably one of the most culturally present holidays in the US. And it definitely looks like Bethesda has plans, at least in one way, for July 4th, as recently, through data mining, a bunch of new stuff was added to Fallout 76 in a July 4th theme. Now don't get too excited, all of this is actually added to the Atomic Shop as it does have the ATX prefix in the files of the game, so it'll probably be available for sale. This is also nothing new, with many updates we do get a preview through data mining of what's coming next to the Atomic Shop, but one of the interesting things about this particular batch is many of these actually contain July 4th in the file name, which basically confirms at the very least there'll be a big sale of new items on July 4th, so you'll actually be able to pick up many of these patriotic skins. Even beyond that, looking back on many interviews we've had now for Fallout 76, a very common theme is the developers recognizing and mentioning the success of the Fosnot Parade event. This was a limited time event celebrating the real life Fosnot Parade that occurs in West Virginia through an in-game event that only took place for one week, but at the same time as when that parade occurred in real life. They've said they want to do more limited time events like that. It was a great way to bring the community together, and honestly, one of my most memorable experiences in Fallout 76. Taking those quotes together with the fact that Independence Day would just fit in so well, and we have all of these unique cosmetic items that they're going to put on sale that day, it seems pretty likely to me that we see some kind of limited time event in Fallout 76 for July 4th. And frankly, I think if they don't do that, it would be a huge missed opportunity. Through data mining, we've seen certain things like a presidential
presidential race event that had been in the files almost since launch. There's actually references to several other holiday themed events that never ended up going live, so it certainly seems like they're either working on future ones or in the past were testing certain ideas. The presidential race event as it's been data mined, and fair warning, this is kind of old so it is obviously subject to change, will more or less involve you actually trying to become president and race across Appalachia to deposit your votes in some of those vote counting machines. And it seems like victory through this will actually give you access to the presidential suite in the Enclave bunker that you can't currently access, although people have glitched into, and also presidential seals that would be exchanged for special skins for certain items, like a presidential power armor, presidential power suit, and the presidential Gauss rifle, all which can be found within the files right now. Again, that's all fairly old, so it is definitely subject to change, but I mean, just connecting all of these dots and even earlier in the article, Bethesda mentioning new features with the next patch, it seems like this could all be happening in the next week or so. Obviously, as of right now, nothing is explicitly confirmed, but I would certainly at least get hopeful, or at the very least, we know pretty confidently you'll see some of these new skins available for sale. But as I mentioned before, several people were kind of disappointed with this inside the vault. It still is very vague. We are supposed to be starting the next DLC wave soon, and we really don't hear much about it. Even beyond that, there are other issues with the Battle Royale mode that aren't really addressed here. Some of the ones I've actually been noticing are FPS issues, surprisingly enough. I tend to be relatively fine or be able to easily get good FPS in the regular adventure or survival mode, but in the new Battle Royale mode, I've had consistent FPS issues, even when adjusting my quality or resolution, which honestly didn't seem to make all that big of a difference, suggesting that it's something else that's going on. You guys might remember in the past, I had a similar issue where if you have too many friends on your friends list, it'll lead to intense stutters in game, although it doesn't seem like this time that's the cause of this, and again, it's pretty much exclusive to the Battle Royale mode, at least for me. Also, another pretty persistent issue, and I'm not sure what's going on here, is with the matchmaking system. You have to imagine there are more than enough people actually playing this mode, especially now considering the fact that, at least on the East Coast, many schools have just let out. Yet, I actually looked back on my past eight matches of Nuclear Winter, and not one of them was the full size, with several actually being in the 20s, which is actually really low and really affects the experience. It makes the game mode feel a lot slower paced because you just don't encounter people all that often. In one game, before the first circle even closed, we were in the teens as far as the surviving players went because there were so few people to begin with. Again, I can't imagine Bethesda isn't having enough players to fill out these servers. It seems like there are a lot of people playing this new game mode, but rather it might be something to do with their matchmaking system and not appropriately filling in players to servers right before they start. Naturally, that's all speculation on my part. I'm not totally sure what the cause is here, but it certainly has been an issue, at least for me, in the times I do play this mode. Although looking beyond that, something I just kind of wanted to share with you all are actually all the rewards you can get from Nuclear Winter. So full credit to this goes to Real Relight. He made a Reddit post talking about this and actually shared images of many of these things. But I figured I'd give you guys some context because I've been getting a lot of questions around this, honestly. People asking, hey, how do I get this particular power armor skin and then sending me an image of one? So a lot of the stuff is fairly basic, whether it be a new weapon skin, a new power armor skin, or even new objects you could place down in your camp. But you actually do get to some of the higher levels, the things do start to get pretty interesting. And again, I will have a full list of this down below if you want to see what level you unlock what. Maybe kind of justify the grind a little bit if you want to shoot for that. One thing that might look very memorable to a lot of you is actually the pink sprinkles power armor paint set. This was actually ported over from Fallout 4's Creation Club, and actually looking at both side by side, they look basically identical. Although fortunately, this is just a free reward, they're not recharging for it if you already bought it. You could actually get Outcast power armor paint jobs, as well as the Inferno Mark 1, 2, and 3 power armor paint jobs. The Gladiator helmets are almost all pretty high level rewards, but obviously look really cool. And then finally, as the level 100 reward, you actually can get a Hellfire power armor paint set, which of course is re-implementing the old school Hellfire power armor that did appear in some of the older fallouts, this one actually looking like another one that was ported over from Fallout 4's Creation Club. So if you see anyone running around with this, which you probably don't because you have to be level 100, it's a new power armor that you have to buy or find in game, but rather earn through Nuclear Winter. So one final thing worth mentioning that has been data mined and may actually give us a look as to the future of Fallout 76's battle royale modes are paper maps. So in Fallout 76, unlike other Fallouts, you don't actually have the Pip-Boy map, but rather you take out a paper map to see the surrounding area. 
Well, over the past couple of weeks through data mining, several additional paper maps have actually been found. You have the general one for just the map of Fallout 76, but then also the Babylon paper map Flatwoods. This is what is seemingly the present paper map used in Nuclear Winter. It's much more restricted. Of course, you can't see the entire map and it looks a bit different. So nothing crazy yet, but there's actually three more in the files. One such one corresponding to Morgantown, one such one corresponding to Harper's Ferry, and finally a very small one corresponding to Charleston. This is actually pretty interesting, as some of the original leaks I heard around Fallout 76's Battle Royale mode weren't describing the current play location, but rather were describing a Battle Royale mode centered around Morgantown. So I wouldn't be surprised if these alternate paper maps are perhaps internal test builds for a different Battle Royale maps that Bethesda is potentially working on. Different maps seems like a no-brainer. You have this massive and beautiful world with Fallout 76's Appalachia, and of course they're going to use other sections of it in their very popular Battle Royale, right? Another user actually placed these maps on the full map so he had a better idea of where they're located and how they're actually situated in the world. But yeah, this is something I think we see relatively soon with Fallout 76's Battle Royale because it seems like a fairly easy and simple implementation from Bethesda. A lot of the framework and groundwork is actually there, but additional maps can obviously really spice up the game mode in well, a relatively simple way, but one that has a big impact. With all that being said though, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. As always again, I thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this one as always, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later!